Greetings, dear friends. You and I are together again, and I trust that we are bonded together by the Holy Spirit because the things I have to tell you are going to rely on the Holy Spirit. He's going to be the one. I'm not to explain every little detail. I'm not to go into detail about everything I say. I'm laying it out here for the Holy Spirit to use, and, and He has been doing that. He's been doing that for many years in this ministry as people come to the knowledge of Christ. It's you coming to that knowledge. It's not you and the preacher. It's not you and the family. It's you coming to this understanding. This is a personal thing. Because you see, this is the understanding that has to do with God birthing his children. And after they have been rebirthed, as all Christians have been, all Christians have been saved and they've been rebirthed. As they've been rebirthed, he wants them to take on some understanding of the family. He wants them to know and to understand that I am father, you are child, and you're, you're to be learning this Christ that is your life. His father still dealing with his son Jesus. And he wants his ch- son to work through you and I in a very pertinent and special way. And by God's grace, that's what's happening. That's what's taking place. God is working in and through our lives. And so I trust that this thing is happening to you, that I'm saying something will make a difference in your life, that something happens. I don't beat around the bush. I, 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 uh, have, one, I have one desire, and that's to bring forth the good news of who Jesus is in human beings today, what he is doing through human beings today. That's my purpose. That's my desire. And he's doing mighty and wonderful works. He's doing great things today. But the average person is having trouble with this Christ that's in them because he just sits there. He's, I've often made the description, he's like an old man sitting in a rocking chair with a world reeling around him and nobody asking him how to handle it, what to do with it, what's going to happen and so forth. And so I'm trying to get us to turn to the Christ who lives in us. It's Christ in us that's our hope of glory. It's us being in Christ and Christ being in Him, all of which is something God handled. We we don't handle that. He put us in Christ when we were saved. We became a part of the body of Christ. And that should have been enough to tell us that we were going to draw all significant and important information, life, effort, truth, works from Him. We are a part of His body. Anything that's in your body is going to take on what's in the body. The body is Christ. It's Christ's body. And so you're going to take that on as a believer as you live your Christian life. I want the whole world to know what Jesus has done. The longer I study and seek out these truths, the more I know that Christianity is not a religion. It is not a way people just get saved and uh, away people go to heaven. Christianity is God continuing to work on this earth through His Son who now lives in the body of human beings. Not the body of Jesus of Nazareth. Not the body Mary gave to Him. But the body of human beings. He lives in those bodies. And we draw our strength and resource from His life. His life. His body. That's what's happening, dear friends. That's what's really taking place in this world. That's the important thing that takes place in this world. And I trust that you're making it important in your life also. I'm in the part of Scripture where this is basically dealt with for the first time. Galatians chapter 1. And I have reached uh, verse 18 and 19, uh, which says in verse 18... But other of the apostles saw I none. He's gone to Jerusalem. So you would think they would all get together and say, Okay, Paul, tell us what's happened. Tell us what took place over in Arabia. What did God give to you? Nothing said about that. He didn't even see the other apostles. They didn't even gather for him. He didn't even get to preach in the big church in Jerusalem and tell them the story of what Christ was doing. Just like it is today. If I went to somebody's big church today and they said, get up and say whatever you feel led to say, I'd tell them about Christ living in them. 
and that scared the preacher, that scared the deacon board, that upset the Sunday school teachers, that upset many in the audience. But there'd be a little handful there and say, ah, I've always thought that. I've always seen that in the scriptures. I've always known that. So there's two kind of people in a congregation. There's some that's going on with the Lord, and there's some that's stuck in doctrine, stuck in religion, and so forth. I'm trying to get everybody that has Christ in them to begin to use Him. So when Paul got over to Jerusalem, there wasn't any of the apostles that gathered. Nobody wanted to hear what it was that happened to him. Nobody was interested in his message. It's just like today. Nobody's really interested in it. I got books in bookstores across the country and so forth, and uh, preachers come in there, they tell me, but they never look at my books. They, they're afraid of them. They're afraid of them. They're afraid for me to talk about the Christ that lives in them. That's too bad because they're going to face that again. We're going to face that. I'm going to face when I get to the judgment seat of Christ what I did with Jesus who lives in me. I think the 12 apostles are going to have to face the issue of what they did for Jesus. He didn't live in them, but they were called by him and they lived with him and knew him. But you and I are different. We're radically different. We're going to have to answer to what we did with the Christ who lived in us. Did we keep on living our selfish life? Did we keep on doing the things we'd always done? Did we keep on hearing the same old gospel from the same old preacher that never mentioned Jesus' life in us, never mentioned Christ working through us? No. That's not the way it's going to be, dear friends. We're going to have to learn it here and now. Because this is a place the world needs it. The Christ living in you is needed in this world now. Right now. And so he, the, the scripture says he saw none of the other apostles except Peter. And evidently uh, he saw John. Now uh, it said I, I saw none of the other apostles save John. That that's You read that scripture that this uh this uh, one, James, it says James, that uh, I saw none save James, the Lord's brother. Uh, James was never an apostle. And so don't read that like that. He's just saying here that, uh, but other of the apostles saw I none save James, the Lord's brother. He was never an apostle. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Where did he get his message out? How did he get it out? The Holy Spirit anointed him to write. The Holy Spirit anointed him to write the things that we needed to know. God trusted one man with the information of what it meant to be a child of God. He wrote one book a section of books, let's say, letters. A bunch of letters. Fourteen letters, let's say. To tell us what the Constitution and the bylaw was of Christianity. He's the only one knew. He's the only one God talked to. Anybody else that got it, got it from Paul. Paul heard Jesus say these things and the most momentous, unbelievable pressure was on him to tell others. He said, I received this from the Lord that I might give it to you. And that's what he did. He wrote it. He wrote it in these in these 14 letters. I'm so anxious that you hear these 14 letters. That, uh, we just uh, produced a new album of the 14 letters read by an old friend of mine out of Hollywood. <clears throat> who could see that this thing was needed like this. And so he read it in his vernacular. And all 14 letters together, they're put together like uh, Paul wrote his original letters, beginning not with the book of Romans, but with Thessalonians. And people are getting them around the world now. They're getting the message from Paul in sound. I put out thousands of of albums and DVDs and CDs that you might get what I say. 
But I felt led to put the writings of Paul, just Paul, nothing but what he says. Because what he says is what determines what's going to happen in this dispensation of grace. Not any other area of the scripture gives us. And so we need to pay attention to Paul. We need to listen to him. And in so doing, you'll grow up into him. And that's what God wants. He wants us to grow up into this Christ. And so James was another that he saw. And I don't, I would not suspect they had kind words with each other. But I don't know that. So don't read that into it. It simply says, in this 18th verse, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But other of the apostles saw I none save the Lord's brother. He talked to John, and John never got out of the law. He never got out of the law. And it's been so amusing on one hand, and it's been so sad on the other hand, that many today check James out to get the law. They check things out from James because James wrote law. So they figure because that's in the scriptures and how James' epistle got in the scriptures is beyond me. But I take it as scriptures. I take it as a holdover, a hangover from the law. But he saw James. It may be that James got the essence of the gospel from the Apostle Paul. It may be that James was given firsthand from Paul what it was should be the message of that day. I don't know that. But he only talked with Peter and he only talked with James. Peter was one of the original apostles, the leader, more or less. And James was not one of the apostles pastor of the big church in Jerusalem but he saw him too and then he says going on in the 20th verse now the things which I write unto you behold before God I lie not I lie not and I've often wondered what that meant exactly what did that mean exactly him saying that I think he was talking about I talk to people who were not really interested in my message. And I'm not lying to you. That's the truth. Take it for what it might mean. But what it does mean is that Paul was given by God the obligation of giving the message to us. And he has done that. We need to believe it. We cannot follow Peter or James. We have to follow Paul. Well, my time is up again, and I'll be seeing you again first next week. And in the meantime, you can get any of my messages off of the archives, uh, which are further on over on our page book. God love you. Have a wonderful weekend, and see Jesus as all. Bye-bye.